Hey everybody, welcome to Draft Review 399. Today we're going to talk about Viceroy. Now this is a new game from Mayday Games. It was kickstarted, I believe, earlier this year or last year. Originally from Hobby World over in Russia. Uh, it's very much a Euro game. You are collecting and bidding on these cards and arranging them into a pyramid. And there are a lot, a lot of interlocking considerations. Basically, it's kind of a super glorified set collection, but just, you know, really cranked up and set to the exponential degree. So before I talk too much more about mechanics, let's jump into how the game works and then I'll come back and tell you what I think. Okay, here you can see some of the components that you get in the game and some that you will not if you buy this on store shelves. I believe some of these were Kickstarter extras for some of the backers, but you can actually go and get some of the stuff extra. So this player mat here uh, is very nice. You don't actually get that in the game. And then also these cool gems here uh, do not come in the game. Now, the, what comes in the game are these cards here that you can put out on the table. You can see there's a red and a green and so on. And then also the gems here are, are these uh, cardboard tokens there. Now each player is also going to get their own screen and depict some character from this world. The world is sort of a medieval slash fantasy style world. It's got some nice uh, remembrances here for the different player actions and what some of the different symbols mean and things like that. So everybody's going to get one of those. You're going to start with a handful of these two types of cards. Now here you have these character cards here. And I should say the sleeves, as you can see, are also available. And these are various different characters. And they look sort of complex, but they're really not. The one thing to keep in mind, I'm just showing you the different art, which is very nice, is you have a few parts of the card here. So we have here a bottom part of this circle here, and then we have these corners there. And you're going to be sort of adjoining these as you place them out on the board in different ways. And then you also have the cost to actually play the card in a pyramid. So as you build up this pyramid, which I'll show you in just a second, you're going to pay per level. So if you're building it on level one, you just pay one blue gem from there. If you do it on level two, it's a blue and a red. If you do it on level three, it's a blue and two reds and so on. Now you also here have these law cards and these have different little special abilities. You can see you also are going to play them in your pyramid and then join the different uh, parts of the, the orbs here. But these are going to have sometimes at the end of the game, uh, sometimes it'll be an immediate effect. And these are actually free to play. You remember these here had a cost to play depending on the level. These law cards are free to play and they're going to give you different cool special abilities and things. So to start the game, players will be dealt four cards and they're going to choose uh, two. One to keep and keep in front of them. Let's just say they choose this card. And then you're immediately going to get whatever the level one bonus is. So in this case, if we chose it, we'd get three victory points. If we chose this one, we'd get a little bonus points for scrolls at the end of the game. So you choose one, you get that immediate reward, and this is the start of your pyramid. As you build more uh, on here, then you're going to add them to either the left or right, or even on top. And then you're also going to choose one to keep in your hand, and these other two will get shuffled back into the main deck. Now players will also start with two of each of the different colored gems, and then they'll randomly put two back into the general supply. So these is like your currency. You're going to use these gems again to build up these character cards, as well as to build, or excuse me, bid on new cards. As you can see here, you have these different columns, and these are the different types of gems that you can use to bid. So every round, new cards are going to come out on this bottom row. So we're always going to have four cards each round. And this deck here is always going to have 48 cards in them. And that's basically four times 12 is 48. So you're going to have 12 rounds. And then players are going to be able to bid on these cards here. Now I should say players also start with three cards from the law deck in their hand. And then what, how a round is going to work is players will simultaneously take one gem in their hand put it in a closed fist, and then reveal it. And basically what you're trying to say to everybody is I want the card in the green column. If everybody picks a different color, everybody just goes ahead, takes the card, they turn their gem back into the supply, and this card goes into their hand. Now, if you have a conflict, let's say two players each bid a green gem, they're gonna spend those, they're gonna lose those gems. Those are gone. And then you can have a little bit of negotiation. And this whole time you can be negotiating and talking. You don't have to tell the truth, but you can say, I really want this. You can try to read what other players really want, what combos and things that are gonna be good for them. And I'll show you how the combos can arise. Then players who are involved with that conflict get a chance to bid again. 
and then if you decide to pass you can actually put your fist out and reveal or if you go through three rounds of bidding and you haven't gotten a card then you can choose three gems from the supply of your choice and then add them to your general supply for yourself now i should say the number of gems is limited per player so depending on the player count uh, you might actually run out of gems and that's going to happen relatively frequently in the game but it is not the end of the world to pass and lose out on a card. Sometimes you just get behind on gems. The gem economy is pretty tight. So after we've been on that, so let's say these two cards have, or let's say three cards have been taken. Nobody got this card. This will actually move up here. And then at the beginning of the next round, we're gonna deal four more out here. And then let's say somebody decided to bid yellow on the following round here, then they will have a choice of either card. Or in the case that two players bid yellow, if they decide, they say, okay, it's fine. You can have this one and I'll have this one, perfectly fine. We can go on. If they can't agree, it's similar to the previous conflict where they have to bid again. So sometimes it's worth taking, you know, it may not be perfect for you, but you can discard cards for gems later, which I'll show you. So it's not the end of the world. So after the auction round, we're gonna go into three phases or rounds of playing cards. And then we're gonna go back into an auction round and three more actions and so on. Like I said, we're gonna play through 12 rounds, basically through the entire deck. Now, if you are told ever to draw a new character card, you can see there's a small deck here. These are set aside after having cards dealt and this deck formed, and then you'll draw cards off of here or sometimes off the law deck as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the development phase and you have three rounds of actions here. And this is mostly about playing cards into your pyramid. So let's say we've got this started here from a previous turn. We've got these two cards lined up and we wanna go ahead and we wanna play this card up here. Now, like any pyramids, you need to have enough of a base to form to play on top of it. You couldn't, for example, play this card here where it's leaning off to the edge. And of course you can play left or right as much as you want, as long as you have a base covering it. So we've got two here in level one. We wanna play this level two card. So again, we've gotta play a yellow and a red because this is level one and two. And we're gonna pay those gems to the supply. And then you're gonna get the reward for level two. You don't get all the rewards up to it. You still have to pay for everything, but depending on which level you put it in, you're gonna get that reward. So we can talk about some of the different rewards. This one simply, if this was on level one down here, it's the same as this. You would just get a little three point token and you go ahead and just put that there on the card like so, and you'll get that at the end of the game. The game does come with a score pad, which you almost don't need. It's pretty easy to add up everything. <laughs> and, or if you play this here, this says you're gonna get four gems of your choice uh, from the supply. Now, now, sometimes turn order will matter because if we, a bunch of us go to grab some gems and there's very little gems in the supply, in this case, you're going to look and see who played the lowest number of cards. Let's see if I can focus on that. Well, let's see, there's a little number there. It says 55. So whoever played the lower number will go. And then sometimes in other parts of the game, turn order will matter. And then you'll just look at the lowest number card uh, in your general pyramid to see who goes first. Now, the other thing to note, as you can see, is actually built a solid color here. If you do that, that's good because that's gonna score you points at the end of the game, but it's also gonna give you a gem of that color. Now, it's perfectly legal to build a different color, like so, let's say I put the, the yellow one here. That's perfectly fine. It's not ideal in terms of scoring points, and of course, you don't get a gem. So let's talk about some of the other rewards here. Now, the other reward here, as you can see, this is a science. So if we look at these tokens here, we have two types of tokens. And we've got here a magic and a science on those. Those are all double-sided like that. And this is an attack and a defense like that. Now, if you get a science, you just put it on the card like that. Most of the tokens and things just go right on the card. And when you pass, remember during the auction phase, if you pass, you can choose to get uh, you know, three gems of your choice. For each science token, you can grab an extra gem. So these are very nice early in the game uh, you know, for getting gems. That's gonna be very important in the game. Now, the magic scrolls, let's say we had played this on level one, this is gonna give us points, but only if we've acquired some of these tokens here. So what this is telling us is that each scroll is gonna be worth that many points. So a big way to score points in the game is to collect these on various cards that give you these, and then also to get more and more of these little bonuses and things. So then at the end of the game, the scrolls will be worth a lot of points for you. Now let's say we had built this one here instead. We build this in level two, we pay a green and a blue, we'll get a sword and three gems of our choice. Now what do the swords do? So the swords actually you'll put behind your screen and you can bid with these when you go to the bidding round to get a quick stab at 
one of the cards up here before anybody else. So you get to steal a card out from somebody else if you use that. Now, if you keep this behind your screen at the end of the game, each of your opponents will lose four points for each sword that you have that they don't also have a shield on their cards to protect. So you can see if I built this card here on level three, I would get a shield and four gems. And so you want the shields to protect you so you don't lose points if somebody has a bunch of swords. So these can be very uh, dramatic at the end of the game and you definitely want to keep track of those. And you really, if you take swords, you don't want to spend them to take the cards unless the card is really, really good because then you keep everybody else on their toes to try to grab shields when they could be grabbing things that actually score them points. Now, like I said, you also have law cards and things here. So let's move this aside. And again, these are just played for free. And we can zoom in a little bit here. This one says at the end of the game, two points for each adjacent character card, up to six cards can be adjacent because you can see here, we can build cards all the way around it. And there's a whole bunch of these different types of cards. This is a very interesting one. You might hold this one for a while. It says place up to eight gemstones from behind your screen on this card at the end of the game gain two points for each gemstone. And then a lot of them are kind of like this one here. It says choose to play either a sword on here, or excuse me, behind your screen, or play six points on this card, or take four gems of your choice. So again, these are free to play. So you're gonna have three rounds of actions. Either playing a card, a passing, or if you choose, you can discard a card to the discard pile and then grab two gems of your choice. Now at the end of the game, there's a few other ways that you can see that we're gonna score points. So let me just walk through uh, the score pad real quick. So you can see the first thing is here, you can see these full circles here and you get the bonuses here. Now you can see here I have a red full circle, it's all the same color. So for each circle that you have in this huge pyramid that you're going to have, you're gonna get points equal to the level where this little top half is. So that most, or excuse me, at minimum, you're gonna get two points because this is gonna be always on the second row. Now if I had, let's just move this up a little bit here. Let's say I had this blue one like so. Now this is on level three, so I would get three points for that. So you're gonna go up and add all these points up. But you might have these tokens here required for some bonuses so that you can say each of the red ones is gonna give you plus four points. So you can get a lot of points this way. Now you might also have this here, and this is going to give you one red gem at all times in terms of purchasing a card. So you always everything is going to be reduced in cost by minus one red gem if you have this out here. Uh, now the other thing is, is that this is out here, let's just put it here. These are going to give you points equal to, again, also these bonuses will apply to that, and these will give you plus four points there. So this one, for example, since it's on level one, would be one plus four, so that would be five points. So we've got our, our gems, our infinity gems, our law cards, which I said will score us points, uh, you know, points on the cards themselves, your scroll bonuses, like I said, and the scrolls aren't gonna score anything unless you have the bonuses and vice versa. And then also if you have a set of a scroll, a shield, and a science token, you're gonna score points for those, and then again, the, the shields and the swords. So it's the game, you're gonna have 12 rounds of auctions, and in between you're gonna have three action rounds and playing cards and discarding cards for points. Okay, so that is Viceroy, so what do I think of it? Well, if there ever was a Euro game, it was this game. Now that's not to say I don't like it. It has a ton, a ton, a ton of set collecting. It's like set collection salad. <laughs> so if you're familiar with the term point salad, which is usually attributed to a Stefan Feld game, it's like, I have all these ways to score points. Well, this one, it's like you have all these ways to score sets. So you're trying to score sets of scrolls and sets of the gems, and then you get the bonus points that give you more points for the scrolls and the gems. And you're trying to collect, you know, sets of the, uh, the science and the scrolls and the defense to do that. And the interesting thing about it is when you start off, you really aren't really sure what to go for because you only got one card in your pyramid and then one card in your hand and then a couple of law cards which might also give you bonus points and then you see that initial flop and you're like okay you really need to and the rule book even says this you really need to focus on getting that sort of gem engine going first and then you're going to have the gems to buy those bigger and bigger uh, or higher level pyramid cards because it's going to cost you a lot of gems to do that and that I forgot to say, and I should say, the level five pyramid, which is as high as it can go as level five, is going to cost you all of the gems plus one other gem from the card. So the level one, two, three, four, plus one of those other gems, and then you can build that 
but then you can collect a whole bunch of rewards for that or you can just get 15 extra points for it as well so you're trying to build towards this you know better rewards as you go because the rewards do get better but then you're also trying to build a base of gems to support that so it's very interesting but it's very like set collecty and you know engine kind of euro thing so uh, there is some sort of interaction with the bidding and i've seen that to kind of different degrees and it's not the end of the world if you kind of get hosed out because then you're going to get three extra gems and you're going to be in pretty good shape that way now that's going to go away with the lesser player count you are easy more able to maneuver around you know what the other players play you always have four cards come out every round so it could be i see aggravating for players when you play with four players to have that kind of like okay everybody got all the cards they wanted and then you know do you want this card or this card i don't really want that card you know are you lying to me about what cards you really want and that kind of stuff so but it's not bad i wouldn't say you should shy away from it because i know a lot of people do like or do hate excuse me the blind bidding it's not that bad but it does add a little bit of interaction not a whole ton of interaction it's just kind of moments throughout the game um, but it's an interesting cool game and i do recommend it for folks that like euros because like i said it's hard to really explain this because it's such a mechanical thing where as i said earlier you kind of start with like nothing which is a lot of Euro games, and then you build up and you get more of an engine and you collect it, but it's very interesting the way that you sort of piece together, and again, back to the whole set collection, because it's like, okay, if I put this here, this is gonna give me gems or a scroll, then I'm gonna grow and build this big orb color and do all that kind of cool stuff. And the other thing you can do is with the gems that you have left over, you can go and place in the different corners of the orbs to change them into the color that you want as well. So that's another reason also to collect more gems. So. It's kind of this weird interlocking thing where you have so much interlocking stuff with the card. You know, you've got the orb color and whatever bonus it's gonna give you, plus maybe a law card that has some other cool bonus that you're trying to think of. So you're trying to like put all this together and so it's super efficiency kind of thing. But so it's like Euro crack, you know? So this is, if you like that kind of stuff, this is really gonna be up your alley. And it's got a little bit of a hand management thing too because you don't really discard a card that much for a gem or for two gems because it's better just to pass. And like I said, during the walkthrough, the gem economy is really tight, but so is the card economy because you're only ever going to get one card per turn from the auction. Now you can get other, you know, uh, special abilities and things that let you draw more cards or you, one of the rewards from playing a card can let you draw more cards and stuff too. So, but it's still a pretty tight economy in terms of the cards. You need to have something to play out as well. Uh, so take a look at this. It's tight, it's not too tight, but again, it's got the whole set collecty Euroy thing going. So take a look at it, thanks.